Hi everybody, have you ever looked at a spec sheet and thought to yourself, what the heck is polyphony? Well, you're not alone. This is something that most customers don't actually really know that much about, but it's one of the most important specs on that keyboard information sheet. Uh, you're gonna wanna know what this is. So here we are with a video to explain exactly what polyphony is and why it's important to your keyboard decision. Thank you so much for stopping by. If it's the first time to the channel, please do subscribe. We really appreciate the support. And of course, you'll be kept up to date with all of the other video postings uh, that we regularly do here at the channel. So let's get started with polyphony right away. All right, so let's cover this kind of obscure uh, spec that everybody seems to come across, ask about, supposed to know what it means and really care about it, but uh, very few people can actually explain the importance of polyphony and why they should care about this when they are shopping for a digital piano. So this should be a pretty short video and I hope it's gonna completely answer the question of what is polyphony and why you should care about it or not care about it for that matter. Uh, and so what I've got set up here to help us with this little demonstration uh, is I have a piece of software here. Um, I'm not gonna mention which one, but it's just a DAW software and we've got um, a sample engine inside where I can essentially turn the polyphony all the way down to one and then to two, to three, to four. And I'm gonna demonstrate exactly what that means because as soon as you get what those numbers signify, this is all gonna completely click and you're gonna know what polyphony is. And you're gonna understand why those numbers might be relevant to you. So polyphony, refers to the number of separate tones that an instrument can simultaneously produce. So what is, practically speaking, this becomes pretty obvious. If you have a, an instrument that has a polyphony of one, which is kind of a misnomer, because that'd be more like monophony, monophony? Who knows what that's called? Um, but it's pretty useless. Essentially, that would be a digital piano that could only produce one sound at once. As soon as you press two keys, it kind of selects between the two and just plays one. So I've got it set to one right now, and we can hear that it's playing that just fine now. But what happens if I press two keys at once? I'm just getting still just one note because it cannot play two sounds at the same time. It only has one, and so that's what you're hearing. Now, if I switch the polyphony to two. Now, no problem. I can play two notes at once, but I get the same problem as soon as I start to play three. It's only playing two of the three notes because it has a polyphony, a maximum polyphony of two. So one might think, you know, if you follow this through, well, if you set this to a polyphony of 10, and you only have 10 fingers, then isn't that the maximum that you would ever need on a digital piano? Because after all, how can you play more than 10 notes at once if you've only got 10 fingers? And so even if I play a chord with eight notes, that's no problem. Or it's not the greatest chord, but I'm using all 10 fingers and I'm hearing all of those notes at once, no problem. Well. In the piano world, this all gets very complicated as soon as you start using the sustain pedal. Because of course, the sustain pedal, you press one note, and if the pedal is down, that note keeps playing, even when you start to play another note. So for example, I'm gonna press the sustain pedal down right now, and I'm gonna play one note, and then two. You can hear all those notes are still ringing. So inside the piano's computer, it doesn't care whether you've used eight fingers to press those down or whether it's just one finger, but the pedal. The point is, is you're asking the instrument to be creating those eight sounds at the same time. So if I do something like, I've just played two octaves with one hand, single note, and I definitely have gone over the 10. In fact, you could hear that by the time I got to the top, the bottom note had shut itself off. So if I do this, you can hear that there's kind of like this zone that follows me up. And the bottom note is long forgotten, even though it should be on a, if it was an acoustic piano, it would still be ringing. So. So 
So it's kind of like just randomly trying to figure out what notes to hold on, but you lose a lot of that. So instruments a while ago started coming with polyphony of like 64, which for a while was more than enough. And when you think about it, you'd have to really almost try to use up more than 64 if you were using the pedal and even if you were doing all kinds of, of you know, swishes back and forth and swoops, uh, it would be hard to use up 64. Um, and I would, you know, I would agree with that. So why do these pianos now have polyphonies of 192 and 256? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, as samples become more uh, complex and the way that tones are generated becomes more complex, when you play one sound, in some cases, you're not actually just accessing a single tone. Um, in the case of uh, some, uh, the way that uh, certain um, layers are put together or, or certain sample sets are put together, when you press one note, the tone engine might actually be processing four or five simultaneous samples to generate that, which means one note is now taking up five polyphony, uh, not one. And if you have layers, like this is an MP11, so we can have three sounds playing at once. Uh, if I turn all three of those on and I press one note, that's a minimum of a polyphony of three. And so now if I do something like this, with three notes playing, I've now pretty much used all of 64 uh, polyphony up. I might even be over top of that. And if you're gonna be playing back any sort of um, MIDI sequencing, where it might be using eight or 16 tracks of a general MIDI two track, uh, like you can do on the Roland RD2000, it's actually very easy to use up a whole ton of polyphony. I remember doing a lot of sequencing. I was doing some work, uh, some commercial work uh, for clients like 10 years ago, when the most polyphony you could get on board was 128. And I was using a Roland Phantom X8, which I believe had 128 polyphony. And I was trying to sequence with 16 tracks and I was losing notes all over the place. Um, I couldn't believe how fast I was actually using up 128 notes worth of polyphony. So anyway, hopefully now you understand what polyphony is and you've seen an example of what that is. It's the number of notes that an instrument is able to produce simultaneously and you can see uh, you know, how that manifests. But then I've, there's a few other examples of where some of those higher numbers might actually uh, start to matter to you. Um, but in terms of just playing piano and just solo, I would say that anything sort of in and around the 96 to 128 is more than enough. Uh, it gives the manufacturer lots of bandwidth to give you nice, complex, thick tone without uh, running out of, of the, uh, the bandwidth to deliver it. And of course, if you're going to be doing any sort of sequence playback or layered, uh, getting into the 256 is actually not an unreasonable thing uh, to want. And so this is why instruments are now delivering those higher polyphonies. Uh, it's inexpensive to produce the gear uh, that can do it. Uh, and of course, why not take advantage of it? Thanks very much for stopping by to watch the video. I hope that's answered uh, your questions about what polyphony is and why it should matter to you. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and check out some other videos that are on the channel. There's tons of reviews, there's some playing comparisons, shootout videos, uh, all kinds of things related to piano, both digital and acoustic. So have yourself a great day and good luck with your shopping and research.